the sort of like any change coming from something romantic like um, you know writing and you know in Bristol it happened in the 80s and I always thought it was something of a romantic notion but actually when it happened this year it, it was far from it it was pretty sad and, and scary you know, really and it was it wasn't a, I saw it wasn't really a solution to change anything and I think a movement like this when it is non-violent it's people applying pressure in all the right places with, it, with all for all the right reasons I think it's 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 not a place to argue it's a place to, it's, a, it's something I, I support really because I really want things to change, but I don't want to see it happen in a way which is sad, burning things down. You know, I think this is a way to apply pressure. Um, by anyone, anyone can get involved. It's not exclusive. You know. Uh, I mean, I, to me, the starting point in my head was that film Inside Job, because basically I didn't understand. I don't understand how this stuff works. I don't understand how the city works, and then to have a film basically explain to you that there's a very good reason why you don't understand it. They've made it so you don't understand it, so they can carry on and you feel that you're powerless. Banks are, basically took the money that was supposed to be safe, that was supposed to keep us safe, and, and robbed it, and then said, oh, well, oh, it was an act of God. It wasn't us. It was just, that was the way it was. And everybody on the street knows that's not the case. It's not an act of God, it was deliberate. There's people that are responsible, and they're not being, held to account because it's in the banking system because it's uh, uh, in this great cathedral of glass and steel um, we're not allowed to say anything about it the, the system is as it is and so every Western politician is there saying we've got to mop up you know you've got to dig deep you've got to dig deep because you've got to mop up and 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 even like normal middle-class people are going well, hang on how does this work um, I feel sad that like with this thing the, the, the way the, the media will put it across is like you know the Occupy movement oh trouble making blah 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 and I think it's interesting like that there is so much sympathy for it you know um, and it's obvious why but people can't put it together in their heads you know what I mean because like it's the banking system it's like a law of God it's like beyond us you know, we're not allowed to think about it you know I swear to God that, that most politicians don't understand the banking system at all anyway. They're told they've got to mop up, they just mop up. It's organised crime on a, on, a, on a global scale and it's in any other situation it would not be protected by the law, but in this case the bank, the law of the politics and banking are the same thing, you know what I mean? Yeah. The, most politicians come from an economic background, so the whole thing is so interlinked and intertwined. If you look at America at the moment, they can't even sort out this issue of, of resolving how to sort of like lessen their debt because they're trying, some parts of the American sort of like uh, Congress are trying to back a few people to protect the wealth of a very few, and it's just, I mean, that on any level is, is ridiculous and sad, and the fact that the rest of the world is being held to ransom on that level is, is ridiculous, it's crazy. You don't, you don't need to be an anarchist. You don't need to be someone who smashes the state to have sympathy with that viewpoint. You know, I, I think that, that that's, that's, that's what I find. I, if, I was, if I was like the, pre, um, the prime minister of this country right now, I, I would be, well, I wouldn't, you know, <laughs> I wouldn't go to the right school. But anyway, um, you know, I would be wondering how am I going to keep this anger at bay? Because this anger is going to get worse. How am I going to keep in power? And I swear, you know, they're siding with the wrong people. You know, you cannot keep the system going in this motion. It, it won't work. It's a, it's a very crazy and confusing thing because, like you said, there's, there's no real size to this. It is, it's about all of us saying, what the hell is going on? What has happened to a system? You know, a democratic capitalist system is something I think we've all come to realise is one that works. But it hasn't been used properly, it hasn't been regulated, and people will say, well, that's human nature. But it's not really. It's not just about human, humans being greedy. It's about the system and the law not protecting the right people and not siding with the right people. And it's a time when, as you're pointing out, you know, right now, rather than, you know, marginalising sort of, you know, activists, and, and citizens of the country should actually listen and, and sort of stand by them and say, okay, what can we do to protect this country and the people in it, as opposed to sort of like 
<laughs> trying to protect a few. The banks, the banks only work if we bank with them. You know, it only works if we if, yeah. we, if we don't <clears throat> operate within the system, within the law. And I think this is this is a law-abiding protest. It's a protest of pro- a pressure. It's actually put back, put, keeping a pressure on a situation which won't get better if we all stand back. And event, it, it blows up. With, there's a riot for sort of like three months. A lot of other people lose their businesses. Kids end up in jail. That's no solution to anything. Totally right. Do you know what I mean? Right now, this is a better solution. And how else would you do it? You know what I mean? How else would you? How would? You, how, how else now? Right now, in 2011, would you register your protest? What would you go and talk to your MP? I, th- I think all, all of us have, you know, a sort of responsibility to look at how it all works you know, as much as we can find out, and how difficult it is, as difficult it is as we we're talking about to sift through it and work out what you can do as an individual. And any any solution that can sort of help, you know, create a create a wave of change is going to be one to do. And I, I think everyone right now is looking at different options. And sometimes it's you know it has to hurt you in the pocket to get people to do things. Like all of us are that way. We all all self involved with our lives, our families, and stuff, and our friends and our situations. And it takes a a bit of a crisis to get people to move and we've had a big crisis a series of crises really and, and now people are thinking about how to how to make a change how to where to spend their money where to save their money and this whole idea of keeping the consumer bubble going by having to spend money at Christmas is crazy it's like people don't need to spend their money I know the economy is in trouble but it's not solution isn't just to keep spending money it's not about make, creating a bigger debt it's well, a crazy way yeah, of looking at it perpetuating the, the motion in the same direction which is just it's going to end just going to keep make it worse but that but well, with like what you're saying with banks, banks, it's like to me, banks can't have it both ways. They can't have the luxury of being protected as part of our country's infrastructure, and then take the capital of that and do what the fuck they like with it. Stick that, in the Cayman Islands. You, you, you can't do that, right? You, you you cannot have it both ways. You cannot have that luxury. You can't say, oh, you need free capital. Um, and and I, I think. If, 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 like governments, if, if the British government, for example, is not prepared to really like, um, make amends to the British people for this by um, penalising the banks the way they should, then I think we should do it ourselves. Everyone in the Occupy movement knows exactly what to do and what they're doing is brilliant. I think it's up to us to sort of stand back and applaud them and drink, raise a glass to them for what they're doing anyway. You know, because I think they're leading the way. And, and you know, whatever you know, we can do as as other citizens or musicians or whatever, is just kind of like help support it. And I, you know, my, my my hand is raised to them really, to be honest. A Christmas message to Occupy would be that I mean, to be honest, that it's two things. The first thing is like. To me, it's really inspiring to actually see when it kicked off in New York, how it kicked off, how it happened really naturally, how it happened non-aggressively, cleverly. Um, you know, I've always been sympathetic with with you know that passive protest, peaceful protest thing is great. The police tried to move them on, they came back, moved them on, they came back, it got bigger, 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 it got bigger. It's like, why do you think that is? It's because it means something. It's because this generation actually has to do this. We have no choice because there's no, you know, and I'm, I'm just, yeah, absolutely, absolutely, like you're saying, we're just really proud that, that our fellow human beings have got their shit together. Yeah, it's great. Absolutely, man. And it's like one of those to everyone in the Occupy movement. Absolutely. Well, that's actually a wanker sign. <laughs> no, no. <yeah. laughs> so, like that. This is the Queen. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>